Good afternoon. It's 106. You're listening to Classical Music here on West Virginia Public Broadcasting. I'm Matt Jack for your host for this afternoon. And I'm here with some very special guests as part of our call for performers. Today we have Autumn Equinox on here performing live without a net. Ryan Kurzak on Hurdy Gurdy, Dave Riggs on Double Bass, Claire Sweeney on Nickel Harpa. Welcome to the show, guys. Yeah, thanks for having us. Absolutely. It's great to have you all on here. And we want to know more about this really interesting ensemble. So, Ryan, first tell me, how did you all come together? Give us your little, a little bit of a background story here. Well, I took up the Hurdy Gurdy because I didn't want to play in a band anymore. And uh, I moved back to West Virginia. And uh, Dave here, I went to high school with him. He decided he was going to get me back into music. And then Claire was looking for a cello player on Craigslist. And I thought to myself, well, Hurdy Gurdy's close enough. So she agreed to get together and play a bit. Okay, that's great. And, you know, why did you all, you know, select these interesting instruments? I mean, it's just something that happened or? Well, I just heard the Hurdy Gurdy at some point in time many years ago uh, on uh, a Jimmy Page and Robert Plant album. Okay. And, uh, I, <laughs> From I Led Zeppelin like, fame. Yeah, yes. Yeah. I, I fell in love with it. And uh, fast forward 20 years, all my Irish folks told me never to get one because it was a nasty, squawky instrument. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then I just decided to commit to it. So that's how I found this. And then Claire, she was uh, playing fiddle, and she has since, how old were you? Six? Yeah, very young. Yeah. And she called one day and said, should I get a nickel harpa? And I'm thinking I'm the last person to ask, should I buy an instrument? <laughs> yeah, okay, <laughs> so yeah, she right. she picked it up and just took off. <laughs> that's awesome. That's yeah. amazing because they are beautiful instruments. Yeah. And then we also have Dave Riggs on double bass, of course. These are all um, wonderful stringed instruments here. And we'll get into more of how the hurdy-gurdy and the nickel harper work and what exactly is going on there. Uh, but first, let's go ahead and get into a little bit of music. We've got several great selections of traditional and folk music. And you have a set of three songs for us to start out with. So go ahead and if you'd like to set those up sure. and explain what those are. Yeah, well, the first one's called uh, Murren's Jig, which is a jig I learned in Asheville, North Carolina at the Irish session from Sean Sutherland, if you're watching. This, is, this one's for you. Um, the Middle and Midnight on the Sea was a tune uh, I wrote. Um, and then Deep Time was, it's a jig, right? Is it something in 6-8 that Claire Sweeney wrote? So, oh, cool. Yeah. yeah, Claire. All right. We got the uh, composer here in the building. Yeah. And so let's take off and listen to this first yeah. set of songs performed here live in our studios by Autumn Equinox. Thank you. Thank you. 
great job, guys. That was awesome. We had uh, three selections there. Murrian's Waltz, is that right? Did I get there? They say Murrin's. Murrin's, okay, yeah, a little West Virginia there for you. And then we had Midnight on the Sea, and then Deep Time, and that's all performed here live by Autumn Equinox in our studios. And let's talk about let's talk some hurdy gurdy here, right? <laughs> All right. Um, tell me about the hurdy gurdy and how exactly it works. Uh, that's a good question. It's really a mystery. Um, some people <laughs> yeah, think right. you, some people think you blow in it, um, but you don't. Uh, it has a wheel that you crank, and um, it has rosin. The, the wheel's rosin, and so it, it bows the strings. Okay. And that's why we have these drones. <laughs> Yeah. And then the key chest itself has little tangents which act like your fingers on a violin. Oh, cool. Um, so you've got drones and you've got the melody and then you have the interesting <laughs> rhythmic part, which I'm not very good at just yet. Uh, yeah, um, okay. <clears throat> but working on it. Right. Uh, so it's a, well, it's a drone instrument. Gotcha. So you're cranking with the right hand and then choosing the notes with the left hand, right? Yes, and, correct. Yeah. Um, but so it keeps the drone going, but you also can play melody on top of it. Right, it yeah, you, you got to do it all at once because as the wheel goes, it's just bowing all of these strings that are that are attached to it. So you just turn the drones on or off and then play the melody and hope it comes out all right. Gotcha, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nothing's Nothing easy about that, but uh, you seem to uh, tame that hurdy-gurdy beast over there. So, um, <laughs> well, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's, um, I, I mean, did you take lessons? How did you learn how to play? Uh, well, I just tried to figure it out myself, and then I recognized I needed some lessons. Uh, so I've taken some lessons with a few people, but right now I'm actually taking lessons from Toby Miller, who's a, a classical hurdy-gurdy player. Okay. So I don't know any classical like you might like it just right. yet. <laughs> right, 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 right. So what is he on. playing, Bach on the Hurdy Gurdy? Oh, yeah, or she something? has a CD called uh, basically Bach on Hurdy Gurdy, and it's beautiful. Really? Yeah. Wow. You That's should check her out. Actually, really cool. Okay. Yeah. And so you're getting lessons from her on that. Okay. Yeah, she has me doing arpe arpeggios and G minor harmonic scales, which I didn't even know existed. So. Okay, right, 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 right. Um, well, that's awesome. So we have that hurdy gurdy, and we'll get into the nickel harp after uh, we play through another series of selections here. We have Spiral Dance, Northern Ballad, and then Bay Rock Tar. Yes. And, okay, I actually pronounced that right. Yes. Good. And yeah. so you want to set those three songs up for us? Sure. Spiral Dance, Northern Ballad, Bay Rock Tar. All these I heard from um, a hurdy gurdy player from Russia uh, called Andrei Vinogradov. He's one of my favorite hurdy gurdy players. And uh, we learned these tunes, which is wonderful. And um, I've actually sent him recordings of us playing these. And I'm not sure maybe he, he doesn't, well, maybe he's got a lot of fans, or yeah. maybe he doesn't speak English, well, I don't know, but I always get a thumbs up. Okay, So yeah. we're going to send this to him as well once we get it. <laughs> It'll give you that yeah. obligatory <laughs> thumbs up here. We hope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right. All right, we'll take it away All when right. you're ready. Autumn Equinox, you're live in our studios. <laughs> Thank you. 
quick stop there at the end (laughs) the hard stop that was great that was a set of three songs there performed here live by autumn equinox spiral dance northern ballad and then bay rock tar and those were all really cool interesting tunes and um i really like the chromatic bass line and spiral dance is that something y'all just added or does that just come with the song or that's all dave that's all oh yeah, great i love that that's yeah. the like that reminded me of something from led zeppelin that chrom- chromatic <laughs> chromatic <laughs> yeah. yeah right that's so uh, i can hear that that um jimmy page or robert plant influence that you're talking about <laughs> um so great stuff there guys and um, where did these you know songs come from? You, I know you said you heard some and um, you know or were able to find them. I, I mean, how do you? Well, I mean, how do you find songs like this? Yeah, it's a good question. I guess once you get a hurdy gurdy and then you discover the hurdy gurdy community and then they lead you down a rabbit hole of all these different tunes and so yeah. a lot of them are like I said Russian tunes and right. let's see, the Bay Rock Tower was was that Bulgarian is that Bulgarian. Bulgarian and great. Um, we like a lot of uh, Swedish tunes. Would that yeah a lot of irish tunes uh-huh. so just anything that's in not in four four or in d or g right yeah. right 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 right, <laughs> right gotcha gotcha um it's great and you know how do you learn them how do you learn the songs you just do it by ear is there any notation or uh there is notation uh, a good bit of it we learn by ear um yeah that's probably the best way what's that i learned entirely yeah, she learns entirely by ear. She learns everything easy off the bat. Just there it goes. <laughs> it takes me a little while. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's <laughs> tough to do to learn all this because the melodies are very complicated. You know, there's you know a lot of uh, rhythmic variation and um, and it just I could see you know getting lost in that. But if you're yeah. you know got that you have that really good ear, then you can you know really follow along. And um, let's talk a little bit about the nickel harpa. Sure. And, you know, I want to know what the difference between that instrument and the hurdy-gurdy. Sure. They're actually, they're very similar sort of conceptually, but I play the nickel harpa with a tiny little violin bow, basically. Okay, right. Versus the the wheel and the crank. It's like about a half the size of a normal violin bow. Right. And uh, it has three melody strings that have a chrom- have chromatic keys, um, much like the hurdy gurdy. It has a key box with tangents that mm-hmm. press down on the string. And then what makes it uh, really ring is it has twelve sympathetic strings mm-hmm. that are tuned to the twelve notes of the chromatic scale. And so any note that you play has uh, a resonant string oh, that will cool. resonate along with it and gives it sort of a natural reverb. Yeah, play play just a couple of notes by yourself. And that's not what and I didn't take put any reverb on that. So Isn't that amazing? It's just, it does that in the open air, no matter where you are, it sounds like very Oh, and it yeah. lasts for like a few In the middle seconds. of the field you it's think really it's just cool. <laughs> twenty instruments. Uh, so it's a Swedish instrument, uh, like a traditional Swedish folk instrument. Uh, nickel harpa actually means keyed fiddle. Oh, in okay. Swedish. Oh, okay. So, and it's yeah. And it's nickel with a Y too. Correct. Um, that's yeah, really cool. And every note, every little button there is a different note on the scale, yep. right? And it has it has about the range of a viola. So, gotcha, gotcha. But you're, so instead mid-range. of just putting your finger right on the string, you're playing all these little clacky keys. <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> right, 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 right. And, uh, so sixteen total strings on this instrument. Wow. Okay. And and it's um, you know how you know what's the difficulty like? What's the range of the difficulty? <laughs> pretty, pretty pretty hard. Well, uh, it's very similar in many ways to playing the fiddle. So okay, since yeah. I had played the fiddle for so long, I picked it up relatively easily. And I'm, right. I've had many fiddle teachers, but I'm sort of self-taught on the nickel harpa. Cool. Um, and uh, do you, I mean, so you press a key and then, I mean, that guarantees intonation or can you bend it or how do you? Uh, you can kind of bend your intonation a little bit by pressing harder or lighter on uh, the key. It's a little finicky, especially up in the very high notes. Sure. You have to sort of uh, very gently press these keys gotcha. to get it to sound in tune. Um it's a little bit of a finicky instrument, maybe not quite as finicky as the hurdy gurdy. Gotcha. Well, <laughs> well thanks. as you heard with the spiral dance. <laughs> right, 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 right. Well, thanks, Claire, for that little rundown on the nickel harpa. And um, let's keep going. Let's keep going on this uh, journey of these this folk and traditional music here. All right. And next up, we have clergy clergy's lamentation, and set that one up for us. Mm-hmm. 
Well, this, well, actually, you should set this one up. This is, this is, this is a Baroque period tune, by the way, just for the sake of class. Oh, okay. All right. All right. (laughs) There we go. The Clergy's Lamentation is a tune written by Turlock O'Carolyn, who is a, was a Irish harper in the sort of early 1700s. Uh, He was uh, blind. He was like blinded at the age of 18 by smallpox. Oh, no. And, uh, (laughs) yeah. So he was, he was, but he was like from a decently well off family. And so they got him like an apprenticeship with a harper. He learned how to play the like Irish harp. And then uh, apparently they gave him a horse and a guide and <laughs> sent him out around Ireland. And uh, oh. he would stay at people's homes and write them tunes. Oh, so okay. He, uh, he's sort of considered by some like the national composer of Ireland because he is such a, an influence on the sort of traditional music of Ireland. Um, and he wrote probably, uh, I think, around 215 wow. tunes that we, like, know of. Yeah, it's cool to hear the histories of these because you sometimes think, like, they just came out of nowhere. But, you know, <laughs> it's really some clergyman, you know, riding, riding <laughs> on blind, you know, who would have not, who thought? So let's take it away. Clergy's Lamentation, performed here live by Autumn Equinox. Let me make sure I'm in tune real quick. Okay. Thank you. 
Clergy's Lamentation there, performed live in our studios by Autumn Equinox. And so that piece is, you know, strictly in, you know, one of the scales there. Um, do you know what that was? It sounds like Dorian or something. <laughs> <laughs> we, we were having to talk about this on the way up. It's a G something. <laughs> <laughs> G something. All those Irish tunes are in weird <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, we're not that, I'm not that No, that's okay. Either. Yeah, no. I mean Yeah, they're all in those like weird different um or not weird, but different modes and things like that. It's really, you know, interesting. Uh, but it sounded Dorian to you. It did. Okay, yeah, okay. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um so let's uh keep going here on this performance and set up our next three tunes for us, Ryan. All right. Let's see. Uh, it's Kira's Autumn Dance, The Last Waltz in Our Home, and Atfield's Lament. Um, the middle one is a Breton tune, French, French Canadian waltz, right? A French Canadian waltz. Um, the first one, Kira's Autumn Dance, is a tune I wrote. Um, and the final tune, Atfield's Lament, is also a tune I wrote for a fiddler in Morgantown, whom uh, we played at the Irish session at the brew pub, and I taught it to him. And when I came back to West Virginia after 10 years, I played it again. He had no recollection of this tune that I wrote for him. <laughs> uh, he, he forgot so, it, no. <laughs> uh, so ungrateful. It's memorable. Uh, yeah, un- <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, man. Okay, so um, how do you go about you know, writing and then, and then teaching it to the band? Uh, how, do you, how do you go about doing that? <laughs> That's a good question. Well, writing, um, I, it just kind of pops out. So I'll sit down, and if I've gone for a walk, and I'll just get the hurdy-gurdy or mandolin out, as it was for Atfield's Lament, and the tune just kind of comes out. So it doesn't, gotcha. they, they don't ever feel like they're actually my tunes, which is fun, because when you play them and listen to them, it's like, well, that's a good tune. You know? Right, 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 right. As far as teaching them to the band, I just make a recording and say, here you go, do something. <laughs> right, right, gotcha, gotcha. Um, great, well... Um, you know, well, you were at the brew pub, perhaps your friend had, you know, a little bit of brew, a couple too many brews, and maybe that's why I forgot it. We'll, um, we'll go with that for right now. This is Kira's Autumn Dance, Last Waltz in This House, and then Atfield's Lament. Yes. So all performed here live by Autumn Equinox.
Great job, guys. That was awesome. That was Kira's Autumn Dance, Last Waltz in This House, and then Atfield's Lament. And those are tunes written by Ryan here? All of them written by you? Uh, All but the middle one. Okay, yeah. All written by our hurdy-gurdy player, Ryan Kurzak. And... Um, those are some interesting tunes there. I'm not, I'm not going to lie, guys. You all, I think you all win the weirdest ensemble award that we've had on this show. <laughs> and I mean that in the best way, for sure. Uh, we had oboe and English horn and double bass on here, but I think this one wins. Um, so um, I'm, I'm interested you know, in the cranky of the hurdy-gurdy. Do you have to do that in time? Does it have to be in If I'm doing the, beating? the buzzing correctly then yes it needs it needs to be in time so you gotta you kind of got to get the right groove with it before right. you even get going <laughs> right so you have to hit the top of the spot of the circle will yeah uh, it's, the, it's usually divided what well, could be divided into three or four but you know the top one is the one and you pull for the two and then up for the three and then push for the four right um and some people can do some crazy crazy stuff with it right um, right 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 but that is not i at the moment <laughs> <laughs> sure 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 yeah cool stuff um Great. Well, we've got a couple more selections here, and then we'll, we'll start with Hellebore. Yes. Am I saying that right? Yes. And then give us a little explanation of that. Hellebore. I don't know what to explain. This is from Belgium, correct? Um, I believe uh, Narragonia. Yeah, so it comes from Narragonia. And uh, it's a wonderful tune that seems to be very popular in the, the hurdy-gurdy community. And um, it's just it's simple, and it's got a great groove, and uh, we kind of fell in love with it once we figured out that we could actually play it so hopefully we will prove that (laughs) right 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 well that sounds great uh we have hellebore here performed live in our studios by autumn equinox
<laughs> I like that little ending. Was that a little improv ending oh, there? Totally. We, we meant it. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds like jazz, baby. <laughs> no, good stuff there. That was, um, that was Hellebore had a great groove to it. Really interesting yeah. stuff there. Performed live in our studios by Autumn Equinox, and we are live on Facebook right now too. And we have some great comments, including Alice Fleischman saying, "Sounds great, guys." Nice. Ruth Melnick saying, "Thank you for." Being such one, bringing such wonderful eclectic music to your show, uh, it sounds great. Marilyn Devita says, "I thought I was in Dublin," and Steve Harris says, "Nice." So we've got some uh, activity going on on our Facebook live stream, and we got Eddie back here running the cameras. Eddie Isom, so thanks for that. He's doing a great job being our Steven Spielberg right now, directing the show. And of course, thanks to Autumn Equinox for coming and performing live for us. We got one more. A uh, set of tunes and, you know, just a few minutes left. So we got Cheap Waltz and Farewell to Glasgow. And let's just take it away. I think we're, we're getting close to the end here. So okay. go ahead.
Great job, guys. We heard Sheep Waltz and Farewell to Glasgow. And that was all performed here in our studios by Autumn Equinox. And they sounded great. And now we're going to have to move to 1A and NPR News, though. Um, and so I just want to thank Autumn Equinox for coming on the show. Ryan Kurzak, Hurdy Gurdy, Dave Riggs, Double Bass, Claire Sweeney, Nickel Harpa. Thank you guys so much for coming on and performing live for us and talking with us. Yeah, it was great. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for having us. Thank well, you. we hope to have you all again. Stay tuned for news and 1A coming up next here on WVPB Charleston, WVBY Beckley, WVBL Bluefield, WVPW Buchanan, WVWV Huntington, WVP Martinsburg.